In any case, we invite you to start taking a look around. We have uh, tables that are marked with certain disease conditions that we are going to be giving people information and uh, teaching about. And there are also vendor tables. So feel free, walk around, get some information. It's an education session to my left. We are doing uh, blood pressure screening, and right back there, there are bathrooms. In the back, to my left, and to your right, there are bathrooms. And to my right, and in the back, there are snacks. So feel free, get, grab something, make yourself comfortable, and get some information, interact, and let's all make this a memorable occasion. In a few minutes, and as we go along, we'll have a formal welcome. For now, I hope you have a good time. Thank you. decided to come together as nurses and form Sierra Leone Nurses Association in Minnesota because first off we care. We are professionals in the healthcare environment, nurses specifically, who care about what's going on in our environment and we came together because we realized that we, we are passionate about what we do. The passion that has brought us together has moved us through two months of getting together, preparing for this health and education fair. And as we're here, we are very much interested in the community around us. We realize that there are resources in the community that we can access and channel appropriately in so doing, we can help people who don't have knowledge about certain disease conditions or who have misconceptions to get appropriate and adequate knowledge that will encourage them to seek appropriate health care, which in turn helps people who are living with chronic but treatable conditions to gain access to health care. And that is not something that we are used to back home in Africa where we come from. People don't seek preventative care. 
we go to the hospitals only when we are seriously ill and a lot of times by the time we get to the hospital people lose their lives we also realize that there is a lack of knowledge so we want to encourage people in the community to acquire knowledge and this knowledge in turn should help people to change their habits habits that people take for granted for example smoking alcoholism drug addiction uh, just reckless behaviors that lead to either people being unhappy or people being stressed out to a point that they develop diseases. We want to uh, use our resources and our education to help combat all these. We also want to encourage and assist future healthcare aspirants or other nurses that are aspiring to further their education to higher levels to do so by gaining knowledge into the uh, assistance we can get in the community and in this country at large. And also we want to be able to empower our communities by getting resources that we know are out there but the communities don't know about. We direct people to these resources and hope these resources can help actually in bringing people to a better lifestyle and better health. Finally, uh, the last thing we want to do is, in as much as we have been blessed here so much, we want to give back to this community. We know where we come from. We know there is a lot of lack back home. We want to be able to also give back to where we come from and encourage the society where we come from to realize that ignorance is not bliss and help them to get better education and better ways of life and proper health. Well, thank you, Mr. Kenewa. Um, what professional experience do you have that will help uh, further the goals of SLNA and what, whatsoever you talk about? I have been a nurse for uh, 11 going on 12 years now and I have a cardiac and intensive care background and I would just want to say I have experienced multiple of various disease conditions and with my background I can actually help direct people to certain things that generally out there we don't have knowledge that we don't have access to. I can help in my own little way to direct people to that. Thank you very much, Mr. Kenewa. You're welcome. Okay. Um, SLNA, Sierra Leone Nurses Association, is one of the newest organizations that just got formed in Minnesota. It consists of professional nurses, descends from Sierra Leone, and practicing nursing in Minnesota. And one of the, um, the things that made me quite interested in f joining SLNA is because after the, um, during the Ebola crisis between um, 2013 and 2016, um, the Ebola epidemic occurred. We also had looked at the inadequacies of the healthcare system in Sierra Leone, the lack of access to healthcare, and of course, during the Civil War, we had total destruction of the healthcare infrastructure in Sierra Leone. So, based on those issues, I was inspired to be part of this organization. And um, also, I wanted to make sure that we had high quality um, awareness for people in Minnesota and for our children in Minnesota to have um, uh, health care access as well as maybe even help with health care access in Sierra Leone. And we are looking at, and the, one of the purpose of the um, SLNA is actually to one of our goals was to foster health care and health wellness in our community, foster networking within professional nurses, work with other healthcare entities in Minnesota, and also to be a part of a community of leaders that are po have po are positive role models so that our young youth of men and women who are interested in, in having a healthcare profession can have access to us and we can be a mentor to them. So 
we hope our hope is that we continue to foster wellness we continue to foster proper health care for our people within Minnesota and also extend it to people in Sierra Leone we are happy to be part of this community and hence our, our one of our mission is giving back to the community because we care so we hope to do that for our people and for those back home thank you mm -hmm. I'm with the, I'm Todd Williams with the Coon Rapids Fire Department. I'm here today because I really believe in safety and every opportunity I can get out to the public to talk to them, relate about safety, I like to do that. Uh, so this is a great event. Plus my neighbor Fatima bugged me for three months straight, knocking on my door all the time. So I knew I had to be here else my house would be the smallest. So. But again, this, this is a very uh, important thing. We're getting out to talk to people about cooking safety. That's the number one problem that we're having is cooking safety, unattended cooking. Um, we have problems with cigarettes. People discard their cigarettes, not in a proper spot. They put them in the garbage cans and their house burns down. Um, a lot of other safety stuff with kids, you need to have a escape plan. Uh, so we're just here to talk to the people and talk to the kids about fire safety. Okay, I'm uh, Nick House, one of the fire inspectors with Coon Rapids Fire. Uh, we're here today to talk with the community about different fire safety tips and how that we can make sure that people are safe in their homes and if there should be a fire that occurs that they'll, they're able to escape from their house properly, get warned that there's a fire, and uh, you know, possibly save a life around here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Hi, Fatima. Hi. Yep. Uh, we are glad to see you at the SLAD event. Why do you think you wanted to be part of this event and part of SLAD? Well, you know, I'm a Sierra Leonean and I love my people. And giving back is something that I really want to do. I believe that sometimes just giving people information can help them, can help better their lives and lengthen their, their, their lifespan, you know. Um, sometimes, you know, they say ignorance is kind but not with help. And if you don't know, you know, what you need to do to prevent something, just like even with salt, sodium, knowing that high blood pressure, you can actually, it could help by reducing your salt intake. You know, little things like that, then you can keep eating it. We were just talking with a member, community member and I was telling her about MSG, how, you know, it's something that you shouldn't be cooking. And in Africa, we believe that, you know, you have to cook that. That, I believe, is Ajinomoto, right? Yes, Ajinomoto, yeah. the MSG, the white, the white, um, type yes, the type little type crystals, type. yeah. Yes. And everybody uses it to cook, yeah. but it raises our blood pressure. Exactly. And until I went to school, I didn't know that either. Yeah. And I have high blood pressure, so I know the dangers. My mother had a stroke and died from high blood pressure. So it's something I'm passionate about, and I am loving this. I really believe that I have to be involved more and more often. So that's where I stand. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you, thank uh, you. So my name is Shay Jingris, and I'm here representing the Minnesota Department of Health. So Fatih and I are here together, and we have some um, informational material about health, specifically about diabetes and about asthma. And then we also have um, information about an event next week called the Malaria Community Forum. And that's going to be held in this room a week from tomorrow from 11.30 to 2. And we're um, presenting back to the West African community about um, some information that we've collected from holding focus groups with members of that community about perception surrounding malaria. So we'll be um, kind of reporting back about the work that we've done with that and we also just have some basic information about malaria as well. That's wonderful. Thanks for coming to the event. Thank you for having me. <laughs> well my name is Joshua Kamanda. I'm here to talk about the SLCM STEM program. The SLCM STEM program was adopted last year with an overarching goal of promoting and supporting the learning of science technology, engineering, and mathematics 
among other minority students in MN communities. We basically target grade levels from 1 to 12. Our program goals are the following. Number one, we support after-school research-based tutoring programs and mentorships. Number two, we organize STEM competitions at different grade levels. Number three, we organize summer STEM expositions and camps. Number four, we organize workshops, conferences, and outreach visits. Hawaii black and minority students. Well, we think this particular group of students are more vulnerable. If we look at data, last year, 2016, students who were prepared for the STEM program to college were far below the average number of students. You had more white folks, more Indians and Asians in STEM programs than black and minority students. So this is the reason why we thought we should come on board and promote and support learning of math, science, engineering, technology with this group. As a matter of fact, we have programs coming on. For example, um, in June, in June, on the 24th of June, at 11 a.m. to 2 p.m., we have secured funding to showcase an exposition on robotics engineering. And we're going to precisely target students from grades 4 on to grade 8. And so we are appealing to parents to begin to sign up now their children for this event. We have people coming from the U of M to showcase this event. And again, I'm going to say it again, it's going to be on the Saturday, June 24, from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. And the address will be 5701 Shingle Creek Parkway Conference Room, 4th Floor, Brooklyn Center, MN55430. Okay, good evening everybody. Today is a Sierra Leone Nurses Fair. We are here to talk about nutrition. As we know, nutrition is a building block for our health. We are here to teach people uh, the right way to eat. And so we set the table for that. We are hoping that the community will pay more attention to their health, especially the type of food that they can eat in order to maintain that good health. In the Sierra Leone community or uh, the African American community, community as a whole, we have a rise in uh, diabetes, hypertension, and uh, many other uh, diseases. Uh, nutrition being the basic for good health is good to maintain it. Now I'm going to have my friend say something about nutrition. She's a nurse. This is Nikki. Um, we need your input on this too. Okay, one of the uh, misconceptions about nutrition, a lot of people say, well, I can't really afford, I can't really afford good nutrition. But the fact is, it's a lot more costly to have poor nutrition because then you develop diseases and bad health habits that end up costing you a lot more. So uh, in the long run, it saves a lot of money to have good nutrition and to prevent things like diabetes and high blood pressure and those type of issues. So there's lots and lots of information about good nutrition, uh, free information on the internet. And also with our public health department, they have lots of good information to fall back on. So not only for the adults, but especially for the children, it's really important to develop those good and healthy eating habits early. So go to your public health department or on the, on the internet and get that information for your family. Yes. So good start, good health, start with basic food. So. Uh, 
I'm Hassan Kamara. I work in dialysis. I'm here. What hospital? Uh, I work in a clinic. Okay. A dialysis clinic. Okay. Uh, I'm here, well, to talk about kidney diseases for our community members. Uh, kidney is like a bean shaped organ. Uh, which is at the lower back of the abdomen. Okay, well, I now, very important organ then at the body. Okay, these are very important organs in our body. They help to filter our blood and remove all toxic materials from the blood. They help to control blood pressure. They also help to produce hormones in our body. They help to produce red blood cells or help the bones to manufacture red blood cells. We, get, we help to keep uh, the hemoglobin level up in our body. Now, when once these kidneys fail, uh, you have very limited options. Either you go on dialysis or you look for kidney transplant. Or if you decide to do nothing about it, then it's just a death sentence. Now, what causes uh, kidney failure in our communities? Currently in the U.S., the two leading causes of kidney failure are hypertension and diabetes. Now, this does not mean that if you have diabetes, you are going to have kidney failure. Or if you have hypertension, you are going to have kidney failure. What this means simply is, if you have those two conditions and you don't take care of them, it can lead eventually to kidney failure. Although we have two kidneys in the body, we only need one to survive. So when your kidney fails, you either do dialysis, transplant, or you can pass away in, in no time if you don't do anything about it. So I'm here today to talk about kidney to our community members and the lifestyle changes that they need to uh, prevent kidney diseases. People need to be aware of the diet, they eat, they, get, they have to be involved in exercises. Uh, these are choices they can do in order to control or cut down the prospect of developing kidney disease. So in short, I have uh, educational materials here that talks about uh, the type of food, drugs, smoke, the effect of smoking, and other activities that affect our kidney, and the preventive uh, measures that we need to take to avoid kidney disease. Mr. Kamara, if somebody is, is worried that they have kidney disease, is there any way they can know, is there anything they can do to know? Yes. You can go to, when you go to see your doctor for physicals, you always uh, talk to your doctor to check your creatine level. You get BUN, nitrogen level is an indication, but usually it's not a definitive way of determining kidney failure. Rather, you have to do what they call the creatine level. There is a particular level when it goes beyond 1.2 and below, it's considered to be normal. But when you go outside of that, then that will be considered uh, having something to do with your kidneys. So that is a test. When you go to, the, to see your doctor, they usually do 24-hour urine collection for them to determine the clearance level of your, or the activity level of your kidneys. Mr. Kamara, you are one of the pioneers of this SLNA. I just wanted to ask you about your opinion about SLNA. Um, thank you, Mr. Sherif, for asking that question. Actually, um, what happened is SL, the Sierra Leone community in Minnesota was founded in 2006. We have been doing a lot of activities in the community, but of late, there were two 
two catastrophes that happened in Sierra Leone that made some of us started thinking of forming SLNA, the Sierra Leone Nurses Association. One was the Ebola. When the Ebola crisis happened in Sierra Leone, SSCM tried to put together a tax force. Some, what is SSCM? SSCM is the Sierra Leone community in Minnesota. We tried to put together a tax force in order to look into how we can help our people back home. Well, some people were on that tax force who are not, who are not working in the healthcare field. We had a lot of issues. Then came the flooding in Sierra Leone. We also, as SSCM, tried to help victims in Sierra Leone. So after those two activities, we then decided to talk about how can we come together as a community to have healthcare workers together to be taking care of crises like this in our country. That was actually what made some of us think about uh, forming the Sierra Leone National Association, uh, Nurses Association. And um, well, with the work of all of us, I'm so happy and impressed, and I'm so uh, glad that I'm very optimistic that SLNA have started on the right footing and we're going to do well with our community. We founded this group for certain reasons. One is, uh, as Sierra Leoneans in this community, there are a lot of resources that we may have access to, which we do not. So I think this group will facilitate those things for us. Other reason is to be able to educate community members to begin to teach preventive measures to our community rather than looking at cure. So these are some of the reasons I think we, we have decided to form SLNA. You will be able to talk to other members who will add to the list. Thank you very much, Mr. Kamara. You're very welcome, Mr. Sheriff. So our presentation is on mental illness because there's a lot of mental illness in our community that people don't know about. You know, because of the stigma that is attached to mental illness, so people don't talk about it. So today is the time for us to talk about mental illness and to educate people. So... Yeah, um, when we talk about mental illness, uh, we want to just make it brief so that people can understand. And one of the major things we want to encourage people to look into is about depression. What causes depression, the form of depression, uh, symptoms, you know, so we try to tell people what they look for, you know, sometimes people feel that uh, mental illness is just when people go uh, crazy, it's like a stigma, they don't want to talk about it. But our hope and desire here is to really emphasize that it's something that uh, can be treated if people are willing to come forward, you know, not to be ashamed, more in our community because of where we're coming from, because of our cultural background. People have a lot of uh, stigma, you know, it stigmatizes people, you know, right. and people even, you know, uh, make fun of people with mental illness. So, but we want to make it that it's something that people should not be ashamed of. Well, um, I just want to ask you a question. Um, usually, you, like you live in a house and, then, and everybody is under a high level of stress in this country because of activities, bills and all that. So how do you start to know when somebody is going through some mental stress or mental illness? How can you identify that living with somebody in a house that is somebody who needs starting to provide mental health resources for them or identify them as needing mental health resources? Right, like um, some of the symptoms of um, mental illness, um, particularly depression, is um, feelings of sadness, carefulness and hope hopelessness, and also angry outbursts and irritability over small issues and also um, loss of pleasure especially if you lose interest in activities that you had you know enjoyed before and also um, sleep disturbances if you sleep more or less that is a form of you know um, a symptom of depression and also tiredness and lack of energy changes in appetite eating more or less 
and also anxiety, agitation, and restlessness. These are all forms of um, depression. So if you see any signs of these in a family member, it is something for you, um, you know, to talk about rather than hide. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, um, Marie, Marie Berry. Yeah, yeah, Bangura. And Sonatu, I'm a registered nurse. I've been, been a nurse for five years. Um, this is really exciting for me. You know, doing this is a big thing. And when we started talking about this, me, Kumba, you know, and I know all of us, we have a lot of nurses, and Sierra Leone nurses in Sierra Leone, and we all have the same vision for our community here and our community and back home. And, you know, for everybody that we talk to, all our colleagues, everybody have the same vision and they're all excited to do this. So that's why we're here today to host this health and wellness fair and it seems like everything is going well. Now why do you guys uh, think it was necessary to become part of an organization of this or why is it even necessary to form an organization like this? Um, like for me, my dad has diabetes. My mom, we have some health issues in, our, in, our, in my family. My dad has diabetes, my mom has diabetes, my dad has hypertension. And at first when I came to the United States, I, I didn't want anything to do with nursing. But when I thought of my dad, you know, at first I didn't want to go into um, nurse, doing the nursing assistance. So I went into nursing and I see that, you know, it would be a good thing for me to educate my family back home. So that's why I decided to do nursing. Um, and I figured it would be a good thing for our family, our community here, and then back home. And then in 2014, I lost my older brother due to the Ebola crisis. And that kind of like gave me the urge, you know, to kind of like do something in our community. And I see during that crisis, it was kind of hard to kind of like put people together, you know, at least so we can assist our family and our people back home. So. And when we talk about this, I say, well, you know what, this is a good, this is a good idea. Hopefully nothing bad happened to our community again, nothing bad happened to, to Sierra Leone, but this is a good start, you know, just in case we have to prepare for the future. Exactly. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, you very much. You're welcome. Nice yeah. <laughs> Go. My name is Yaria Bangura. I'm a nurse practitioner. I work at Hennepin County Medical Center. I'm a Sierra Leonean and I'm so happy to be part of this organization, Sierra Leonean Nursing Association, um, because our goal for this um, organization is um, to be able, you know, to help our community to understand the risks and benefit of being healthy in our community. And I am really, really proud of us coming together and doing this because we're really, really, you know, our community really, really needs to be educated about, um, about health and wellness and the resources that they can get to help them, you know, with their health. So that's why, you know, I'm so proud to be in this organization and also we can be able to give back to our country, the people that are back there. Because I remember when we had the Ebola, so many people died and we're not able to contribute. As nurses in Minnesota, we are a lot of nurses here that we know that, you know, we can be able to be a contribution and give back to our country. So I'm really, really proud of what we're doing and I'm hoping for this to move forward and then as an organization doing something good for our country. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Ready? Uh, hello everybody, my name is Anthony Alpha Bangura, I'm a member of the SLN group. My purpose for the group is to, you know, meet with fellow nurses and try to figure out a way of helping our community. I know it's very important to give back to our community and this is really what's moving me or what's pushing me to be a part of this group. And I'm excited to be, you know, in this group and, you know, trying to bring in whatever information, whatever ideas I have to kind of promote community health to our fellow Sierra Leonean that lives here in Minnesota and also those back home and um, just kind of connect with other nurses and you know share ideas and see how best we can all collaborate to help our community together. Thank you very much.
Hello, my name is Kumba Kanu, and I'm excited we're here today. Um, Sierra Leone Nurses Association was started just a few months ago in February. And uh, our main goal is to our main goal is to promote health and wellness within the Sierra Leonean community here in Minnesota and also in Sierra Leone. We are having this health fair today to let our Sierra Leoneans know that we care about them and we want to give back to the people. We believe in education. We know that health education is one of the key factors in helping a patient uh, to manage their diseases. So we're here today and we're bringing um, uh, we're giving health information and we're also doing a blood pressure screening so our community can be aware of uh, the chronic conditions that are going on out there and how to manage those uh, conditions. I am very happy you know, that we have formed this organization. Um, the SLN members are very uh, enthusiastic, they want to work with the community and we're asking our community to work with us because only if we work together we can have a bigger voice to move forward we can do bigger things we can raise we can raise funds we can advocate for our people um, Sierra Leone Nurses Association we want to empower the Sierra Leonean community so they can take charge in their health and they can also um, know what their conditions are that way when they know what their conditions are they can know the consequences and they can deal with those conditions so we're very happy well, uh, this is going to be a continuous thing it's not going to be just today we're going to keep doing this every year we're going to have a fair and towards the independence of every year we'll have a fair um, you were one of the architects of this organization um, you organized this um, health and wellness fair today what how how do you assess it and are you happy at the outcome oh absolutely yes i i was the one that uh started the whole thing the brain behind it so i was uh, inspired by many events um, including I went to Sierra Leone a couple years ago actually a couple years ago and I went again last year I went to some of our hospitals there and I saw um, that they, they, they have lack of resources there and I saw there are a lot of social justice issues there so I kept thinking um, we have to come together in Minnesota the nurses have to come together and again I looked in our community and found that uh, we, we have a lot of uh, Sierra Leoneans who can benefit from health education so that's why I called member after member and these members when I called them and I talked to them they were all excited and they all had the same goal in mind whatever I had in mind they had the same goal in mind and we all came together we just started this in February and we thought we should let our community know that this is what we're about and that's why we're having the health fair the health fair is to introduce ourselves to, com to the community right now and to tell them that this is what we want to do we want to care about their health we want to be an advocate for their health we want to empower them and I'm very I believe in the organization the, the the members in this organization they're very compassionate they're hard-working we have a very versatile group that's ready to work with the community so I'm, I'm I'm hoping that the community is ready to work you know to work with us I see uh, down the road I see bigger things happening I see bigger things happening down the road. So, um, and uh, Asheku, um, you've been a, 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 one of the pioneers of this uh, organization as well. And I thank you, I thank all the members of the organization because it's only when we come together that we can have a bigger voice. So thank you very much. Tonight has been great so far. You know, uh, everybody's here, people are learning a lot. So thank you very much. The, the, the real reason why I am um, so excited about SLNA is um, if just based on the history of the healthcare challenges of our country, when we were born, like we were born in the eastern area of Sierra Leone, um, our hometown Shabima had a very wonderful hospital, the Nixie Memorial Hospital. It was um, 
one of the best healthcare institutions around that whole area. People used to come from Guinea, uh, Liberia to come and access the healthcare services. During the war, um, all those facilities were destroyed and that just mirrored what happened in other areas of Sierra Leone. Um, the north, the west, the east, a lot of healthcare resources were destroyed. So some few years ago we had the Ebola crisis and some a year before that I think we had the cholera epidemic. Uh, it was it really revealed to us as Sierra Leoneans that the health capacity in the country could not uh, meet those challenges. So we decided that it was time for us to come together and see how we can help um, just with simple healthcare things to help our people back home, force educate our members here about their taking care of their health and then try to mobilize resources. And so that if we have crisis like this, we have a professional organization whose members are ready and willing to meet healthcare stakeholders in Minnesota to help back home. So we are very excited about um, SLNA, Rally Nurses Association in here in Minnesota. We had this uh, health and wellness fair. A lot of people turned up and uh, we are just excited about how it turned out. Thank you very much. Okay, I want to see the team in the middle. 